Hey, welcome back. We have what I call a bonus knife. Got a really cool knife, and as a part of that, it came with another knife, and I'm excited to give this another try. This is a Utsler duck. And I'm immediately reminded how beautiful they are as soon as I got it in hand here. But I did try one here on the channel before, and uh, it wasn't for me on that particular one. I actually think that one may have had this same milling. But this is a pretty cool one because it's got a copper backspacer, copper collars, tie studs, and a nice milled handle and everything. So let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's pretty neat. There's only a handful made with copper, um, you know, call it copper accents on these ducks. So this is one of them. And I hunted this down to trade for a rosy I really wanted. Ooh, that was nice. And um, <laughs> I ended up finding an even nicer one of these that the uh, that the trade that guy I was trading for wanted. So he got that one, and I got this one. Just trying to do right by this guy that traded me this amazing Damascus rosy. If you haven't seen that video yet, it is quite a stunner. So because of this, I got this. And actually, I gotta say, I am. Really impressed. This one feels better than the prior one I had. Better action. Now let's see if some of the issues that I had on my prior one are resident here, which was it's pretty darn good lockup. Let's see. I might have to adjust that a little bit. This thing also has a beautiful, beautiful hollow grind on it. It is a little bit of a user for the seller, um, but it looks really good actually. Yeah. It's definitely been used. Um, could use a sharpening. You can see like one little snail up there on the blade or scratch, whatever you want to call it. But man, that blade looks really nice, actually. I've never quite understood what people loved about these knives because of the one that I handled, but this one does feel quite a bit better. And I've got to say, I kind of get it a little more now. I actually really wish I'd had a chance to handle the one that the, uh, the guy got because that one was on washers and I would have been really curious to see what these knives are like on washers. But yeah, immediately this is quite a bit better than the one that I handled before. Still has that issue. I was hoping that maybe that wouldn't be the case here, but this one doesn't have it just happening. Like you have to put a little effort into it, but still that little bounce is a little disappointed to me and it seems common on his knives. I even saw that a little bit on a brand new one at a show recently but overall this thing does feel a little better all around and i have to say for the price i got it for it's feeling like a pretty sweet knife Let's see if there's any lock rock on it or anything no nope, this thing's solid but the lock bar is very easy to actuate the action's great you know what this reminds me of is like um this is like just as good as like a waka a shark knife co waka but for a lot less money. <laughs> About half the price on the secondary right now versus the Waka. Um, but this is really good. So that's a pleasant surprise. Now I guess he uses this collar as a bit of a over travel stop. I was kind of feeling that out there. Just want to make sure I'm seeing that right. Yeah, there's an over travel stop. It's got a removable lock bar insert and stuff. So this is a very nicely built knife. I have to say, I like this at the price that I got it for which my prior one I paid a lot for because the secondary was hot and I sold it for maybe a little less than I got it for, but a reasonable price. At the price I got this for, I, I wasn't planning on keeping this. I think I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> this feels great for the price. So this was under a thousand. The last one was quite a bit over a thousand. I think I paid 1300 for my last one or something like that, maybe 1250 and then sold it for I don't know, I feel like I took like a $25 or $50 loss. Sold to a really great guy that actually lives pretty close to me here in uh, in Washington State. Um, but this one, this one uh, for under a thousand bucks feels like it's a keeper for me. That's a beautiful knife. I'm gonna get this thing sharpened up and this could be a, this could be a, a nice little keeper. Huh, did not expect that. I was expecting to get this and resell it. But uh, the guy kind of got me into the idea of copper accents throughout the process because I had to go. So, so here's here's what happened. Um, the um, the guy that had this knife, 
had been on a long-term search for a copper-accented duck. So initially we found this one and two other guys that were that actually had them. So I, I did quite a bit of research, found people that had had them at some point in time, and then um, uh, started to reach out to people to see if they might be willing to sell their knives. Most people either didn't have it or weren't willing to sell, um, but I did find two or three people that did have them and were willing to sell. This is one of the guys, this is the first one. So this one actually went to this guy's house. Then the other one came through and that one was his dream duck. It was a slotted duck. It had a really cool milling pattern and the pivot collar was a little more elegant. It was on washers and it had um, copper on the actual thumb studs. This guy was like, dude, that's my dream knife. And I'm like, well, shit, we should get you your dream knife. I'll just buy this one from you and that one and uh, you'll get your dream knife. And he gave me this for table price, which was so cool because this was such a hot knife coming out of that show, it could have easily sold for hundreds or even a thousand dollars more than table price. So I got this beauty. And then uh, now I got this beauty, which I didn't uh, didn't expect to be uh, a long-term one just because of my prior experience, but that's pretty freaking good. That's, that's action right there. That's nice. So it does have a, a tiny, tiny bit of blade place. Let me see if I can take that out and still get that kind of action. If that's the case, this is this is a real nice knife to me. So I think it looks like it's a T8. Let's not put the T7 in there. T8. And unfortunately, the one thing I do not like about this design is it does have the What happened once I did that? Not quite as drop shut, so I may have overdone it slightly. Okay. Nope, still a little bit of play there. Sometimes when you have these two sided um, pivot screws you can also adjust which side you adjust and that can help make it work a little better so maybe we'll try the other side all right that is pretty damn close to full lock so we ended up switching to this side right That is fully locked. Oh, still gravity job shot. Barely, but maybe with a little bit of work. So it feels like I'll probably need to lock tight this guy. But oh yeah, now it's nice and controlled too. Ooh, that's sweet. Check that out. Nice. Okay, now I'm wondering if I already loosened it up just through this few flicks because that seems like it's a little less yeah it does have a touch so I think I'll need to Loctite this one I'll do this off off camera but that's pretty sweet kind of curious how this copper held up here pretty nicely it's got a little patina on it but it's in good shape it's nice and nice shape this guy's like oh I carried it and really made it out to sound like it was in like a user but aside from this little guy right here there are not they move one little mark right there there's not a lot of evidence of use on this knife this is sweet so i think it just needs a a little sharpening i will show you this thing's definitely been used you can find some quick paper to attempt a cut on. Let's see what we got on the edge. Yeah, this is uh, not cutting paper in its current situation. But I bet this is like, I'll maybe just try a strop and see what I get. Eh, feel a little, little. I don't want to say a roll, but I feel a little, maybe even a little roll on that edge. See if we can tell in the camera. You can actually see it better in the camera than in 
person, it's too small. But yeah, there might be a little burr on that. Yeah. So this might just be due for a good old fashioned sharpening. I don't think it would take much though. I don't even know I'd go to like a 600 grit. I'd probably just do like a 1200, eh, I don't know. Take a look at it. It's a nice little edge though. I like, I like the edge profile on it. It's very minimal. I would really try and retain that exact same edge if I were to sharpen it, so that's pretty sweet. Nice. Well, it's good to finally find one of these that I really like because a lot of people hype them up a lot and I just didn't quite get it. But one of the things that I look for on these um, knives that have titanium frame locks is how susceptible is it to lock bar pressure? And this one's definitely, definitely susceptible to it, but it's still comes out okay. Like it's not, it doesn't death grip it. It gives you maybe an extra 30, 40% maybe even like a 50 to a 60% additional detent pressure, but it's not bad. Sweet. Nice knife. Nice little surprise um, that came out of this uh, particular purchase. So I think that's all for now. Uh, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.